Hey guys, just a little quick supplementary video on uh, exploration. The Europeans are coming to the Americas, right? 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue and discovered the Caribbean. Made four more trips, made four trips total to the Americas. It took them a little while to realize that this is a whole new world that's never been discovered before. And remember, in 1494, the Pope announced that all of North America so he thought, belonged to Spain, and no other Catholics could come here. So let me show you something real quick, a little map of how the Americas were settled. Spain is going to get this right here. It will be untouched until the Protestant Reformation opens the door for other nations to come in. This is all Spanish, unchallenged. Spain will get all of these places that are now Spanish-speaking. They will determine the culture. They alone can loot the resources. Now, one thing the Pope didn't count on when he made the Treaty of Tordesillas in 1494, what he did is he drew a line straight down the map and said anything on this side belongs to Spain, anything on this side belongs to Portugal. They had no clue this existed because nobody had sailed down that far. But lo and behold, on that map, the tip of Brazil sticks out, and technically it belongs to Portugal. So today, Brazil speaks... Portuguese, which is the only nation Portugal was allowed to colonize down here according to the Pope's Treaty of Tordesillas for good Catholic nations. Now, once uh, all of that fell apart, Spain already has enough stronghold, enough fortifications to defend this area, and nobody else is going to get in. So Brazil just sits right there. Plus, what does this look like in South America? Very dense tropical rainforest. Not much you can do with it back in the 15, 1600s. So Brazil is going to focus on the coast and they're going to focus on growing sugarcane as a means of providing calories for their people and a fortune for their empire. Up top, the British are going to explore the coast here and eventually up in here and the French will hit the waterways. They'll start at the St. Lawrence River, get to the Great Lakes, down the Mississippi. Anything that's water-based will belong to the French. That's coming up next chapter. We haven't gotten there just yet. One thing I want to point out, when you're trying to figure this stuff out, how did these people decide where to go? How do you determine what new area you're going to explore? Well, as explorers set out, if you'll notice, the Spanish were the first ones here, and the Spanish are all going to take a very particular pattern. They're going to sail south from Spain until they hit the Americas, and they're going to tour all this kind of stuff in here. Right? When you have England, England's going to go up top, trying to find a way around the Americas, and then they're going to loop over to here. And then the French are going to go down and over and up and over. Why doesn't anybody ever go through the center of the Atlantic? You ever wonder that? See, they're sailing ships back then. You're powered by the wind. And if the wind ain't blowing, you ain't moving. Unless you hit a current. Now, you've all seen Nemo. Right? The current that takes the turtles down to Sydney, Australia? These things are real. The world is a circle, basically, a sphere. And as you spin it, all of the water gets to moving. All right? If you don't believe me, pick up a snow globe and start spinning it in a circle and watch the patterns of the water. Now, with the continents here, it changes, to, keeps the water from spinning in a, in a circle hits the continent, and wants to go in a circle, it can't, it goes to the top and circles back around. Now remember our explorers, nobody's sailing through the center. You know why they're not sailing through the center? Because the center sits still. There's no movement. It's called a gyre, G-Y-R-E. And in the middle, we call this the Sargasso Sea. It's full of anything as the current swirls around the Atlantic, pushing people quickly this way, dropping people quickly that way, everything floating on the surface eventually gets sucked into the middle like a big old drain. And you have lots of grass and lots of just garbage, lots of whatever floating here in the middle. Over in the Pacific, we have the same thing. We call it the Pacific Gyre, G-Y-R-E. If you'll look that up right now, when we finish the video, look it up. What you'll find out is all of the world's garbage that's hit the ocean as this swirls, it pulls it up in the middle, and you have this ginormous island of trash. And some places thick enough to walk on, it's like a little mini subcontinent made of plastic in the middle of the ocean. 
You don't want to sell your boats through that. Sailors never have wanted to go through this. So when explorers set out, say from Spain down here, they're going to hit the ocean currents that are going to zip them over to America to the same spot. Zip, zip. On the return home voyage, they're going to go north. It's going to zip them over to Europe, just like on Nemo. You get as far as you can, and then you break out of the current, spin around a little bit, say goodbye to the turtles, and then you move on over to your country. This is how this stuff works. England, best way for them to get to the Americas, is hit this little northern current up here and zip, drops you right here on the east coast. Quick and easy, not a problem. Right? You with me? What about Portugal and their explorations? Well, Portugal wanted to get to Asia. So if you wanted to get to Asia, what you'll do is you'll leave Portugal, you'll sail south and hit this little baby right here, and it'll zing, fling you around the bottom of Africa. Once you're around the coast of Africa, it'll whip you back up the side of Africa and drop you off right there in India. Get outside that current, you're going to go slow. It's going to get ugly. If the wind ain't blowing, you ain't moving. As long as you stay in this current. So when you're looking at the explorers, some of it wasn't really that adventurous. Sometimes they just floated on the ocean and followed the currents and see where it took them. Kind of takes the mystique out. But that's the reality of it. And if we look at colonization, who chose where to go, this played a big role in it. Because remember, they're in sailboats. It's not like they're going to cut across the middle. They can only go where the wind takes them. All right? I hope that helps you just visualize what's going on as we try to settle the world, or as, as we try to settle the uh, Americas, and as the Europeans try to reach the other side of the world to open up global trade.